stand as long as you're up. Start me off with prayer here. Nice and loud, please. Two weeks ago, 
Uh, we, we talk about whatever is available, that God is a God of provision. He takes care of us. Last week we, we talked about uh, that we grumble about provision, and we're, we're going to take another look at provision again this week because as I looked at the assigned readings for the last three weeks, um, they all kind of just kept leading me to this. But we're going to take a bit of a different look. Tonight, our message title is Food for the Journey. And I want to ask you, how concerned are you about tomorrow? How concerned are you about the journey ahead? Do you have enough stored up? Are you worried? Are you concerned about what is coming? I know many of us are struggling with significant events in our lives. And it's beyond just the grumbling. Sometimes the events in our lives, they just, they get us down. And we struggle. But I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone because God is with you, but you are not alone in your struggle with sometimes that discouragement. And even some of the great individuals of the, of the biblical figures struggled with discouragement. And we, in our first reading, we talked about Elijah, and we're going to talk about him a little bit more. But I want to set the stage, I want to remind you of what is happening right prior to our, our uh, first reading here this evening. This, and you probably all remember this story, but I want to remind you, this is when Elijah was set against the 450 prophets of Baal. And, and he, uh, they were trying to call down fire from heaven. And, of course, Elijah won. And, and the fire came down and, and burned up the water and the altar and everything. And then Elijah put all the prophets of Baal to death. Now, those prophets of Baal were kind of Jezebel prophets. And let's remember who Jezebel was. Jezebel was... Ahab's wife, and Ahab was the king of Israel. Ahab was supposed to be worshiping God, and he married somebody who was a Baal worshiper. And so when Elijah had these prophets killed, she didn't really appreciate that too much. And she came after Elijah to kill him. And that's where we pick up our first reading for today in 1 Kings 19. And Elijah was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And here's where we get a good look at Elijah's extreme discouragement. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father. Elijah just comes off this great victory. God used him in a powerful way, and he's running scared. He tucks his tail between his legs, even though he preached a great sermon. The people understood that Yahweh is God. Jezebel was after him, and now he was afraid. He was discouraged. Discouraged enough to curl up and just want to go. It's not an isolated event in the Bible either. If we look at the story of Jonah, Jonah was uh, swallowed by a whale and then, or by a big fish, excuse me, a great fish. He was swallowed by this fish and spit out on the land and he went to Nineveh. He, he preached the word of God and all these people turned to God and repented. You would think after an experience like that, that Jonah would be all the more excited to serve God in whatever way he wanted. And Jonah has a moment of discouragement very similar to Elijah's in Jonah chapter 4. And he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. 
Therefore, now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Woe is me, just take my life, I might as well just die. I wish I could say that I've never had or experienced those moments in the ministry. Sometimes it's tough. But thank God those moments don't last. Moments where I say, why am I still doing this? I am so blessed to be here at Home Center. I am so blessed. I feel very loved and appreciated. So, so don't get me wrong. Don't start worrying about me. But, but you know the things that I'm talking about. You experience the same things. Sometimes we just say, ah, why do I have to deal with this? Life can be a struggle. The aspect of provision that I want us to, to understand here tonight is the aspect not only of provision to get us through those things, but the aspect of miraculous provision. Provision that is beyond what we could possibly imagine. We see this in Elijah's story in 1 Kings 19. And Elijah lay down and slept under the broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and he lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Picture the scene. An angel comes to Elijah. That's amazing enough. But then he gives him bread and water, and not only just bread and water, but bread and water that sustains him for 40 days and 40 nights. That is miraculous provision. I think sometimes we have to get down to our, our bottom. Sometimes we've got to hit that the, the bottom, we hit rock bottom for us to recognize the miraculous work that God can do in our lives. But I want you to notice here why a miraculous provision was necessary. Can anybody tell me why God needed to provide a miraculous provision? Because the journey was too great for him. The journey was too great for him. Elijah would not have survived. Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. The truth is that the journey is too great for you and for me as well. We cannot make it on our own. We will not survive without God's provision. God is a God of provision, but a God of miraculous provision. And I think that, I, I mentioned it at the beginning in the announcement, but I think with our daycare, I am looking for a miraculous provision. We've got to recognize that we will not find a daycare director on our own. Our facility needs are beyond our capability to fix. We've got to count on God to provide miraculously. But the great thing about that, when he does, what a story we have, and what a glorious God the world around us is to. Those people were not smart enough to start a date there. God had to be the one to do it. Only God is the God who can make it happen. I don't know what God is going to do or how God is going to do it. But he's brought us this far. Wouldn't you think that he will continue to provide for us? That's what Moses was telling the people of uh, the children of Israel before they entered uh, the promised land in Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness, where this fiery serpent and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. God had miraculously provided for them from the time they were in Egypt. He brought them out of Egypt for 40 years through the wilderness. Believe that he's going to be with you in the days ahead as well. Because, Moses says, it's not going to necessarily get any easier. But in Deuteronomy 31, he says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Those are almost the final words of, of Moses before he commissions Joshua and sends them off to the promised land. Be strong and courageous. Don't get discouraged. There's going to be rough days. But God is a God who provides in miraculous ways. Trust in him. In Isaiah 40 we read, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Wait for God. I know sometimes it's difficult, especially in those times of, of discouraging moments. Those times where it just doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. But wait for God and he will lift you up. On wings of eagles. You've got to remember that the God of creation, the God who created all things, still provides and sustains us. In fact, the uh, the first article of the Apostles' Creed, uh, uh, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. The explanation that Martin Luther wrote talks about not only God being a creator, but a sustainer. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reasons and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does not out of fatherly divine, does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. God created all things, but he's not done taking care of us. And it's not because we deserve it. It's out of his love for us. He wants to provide for us in the now, and he wants to provide for us in the future, and he does so in miraculous ways. He does so because he loves us so much, so much that he provided for our eternity. And we come back once again for the third week to John chapter 6 and, and Jesus and the bread of life. In John 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. That is miraculous provision. He will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. God is a God who provides miraculously manna in the wilderness. And God is a God who provides miraculously in our lives. And God is a God who provides the flesh of his son, Jesus Christ, to on a cross suffer and die for you and for me to miraculously provide an opportunity through faith in Jesus Christ to live in eternity. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 1, I give thanks to my God always for you 
because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's grace that saves, God's miraculous grace that saves, God's miraculous provision for you and for me here on this earth and for all eternity. If we can just have more courage, less discouragement, less whining than either Elijah or Jonah, Trust in God through the difficult times. Trust that God will provide in sometimes miraculous ways. And not worry about what tomorrow will bring. As Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, or how shall we start a day here? <laughs> For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. God will provide all we need. I just ask that we do our best to be faithful. Yes, let's not grumble, but let's not get discouraged either. Let's not lose heart, but trust in God. Don't be anxious. Because God is a God to provide. Paul writes in Philippians 1, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I am sure of this, that the journey is too great for you and for me. Whether it's regarding the daycare or just life in general, the journey is too great for you. It's too great for me. For God is a God who provides miraculously. Trust in Him for today. Trust in Him during the dark times and the difficult times and the discouraging times. For God will provide now. His son, okay. Comments, questions, thoughts? Yeah. yeah. Now you're ready to speak.
You know, life can get discouraging, and that's just real, right? But God gives us hope. And, and even, even the strongest uh, in the faith have discouraging moments. We all go through that. We've got to trust in God. And it's nice to have brothers and sisters who can hold us up when we go through those times, right? And that's one of the reasons why we go to church and why we come together and Bible studies and all that other good stuff. Emily.